Hello, this is Dave, the designer on Astrobase Command. Welcome to our alpha, and I hope you enjoy this gameplay video. So in the game, you play as a space station administrator, trying to keep your species from blowing itself up. And you do that by following around the lives of people and making sure that they're doing their job and not getting hung up on their, their life's trials and tribulations. So here is our starter station. It has a combustion plant which burns fuel. It has toilets for waste, and there's a cargo hold which holds cargo. There's also these components, which is the hull and the hull options, and these interact with the properties of matter. So for example, conduits move fluids around the station and compartments keep reactives separate. In this case, you can see the combustion plant, which was part of this randomized start, is a reactive. So in this case, the compartments is keeping that combustion plant from reacting with these items in storage, the salts, and the rare metals. There's also a conversation. Let's click on it and see. Lorelai Hardy, who is puerile, says a provoking platitude, while Zachariah Brennan slyly sanitizes the platitude. So this is a procedural conversation happening between two characters with composite personalities. The text is merely a reflection of the statistics that's going on under the, under the hood. Here we see Zachariah Brennan is leading the pack and Lorelai Hardy is eating from storage. So what's happening is these characters have experiences as their personality expresses themselves through the game and then they, they grow and have uh, personality changing and growing based on those experiences. So that includes jobs, conversations, and kind of these little thoughts that they have. So in this case, enjoying the distraction is a subconscious personality that's kind of coming through. And you can see it's the distraction of watching, watching the moon go around their planet here, which she is enjoying as, as are we, I guess, if we sat here and watched this. There's also some recruits. There's Neil Bruce, who's perverse. He willfully causes sickness and calamity. Might explain his medical skill. We have Grant Fry, who's a stalker. He hides with menacing desire, so of course he has stealth. In Astro Base Command, everything's hooked into the personality system, so you'll see skills just kind of naturally and emergently align with the personalities of the characters. And we have Liliana Johnson as a recruit, who's a coward. When threatened, she nonchalantly surrenders, and of course, she has some threats. Skills, because being a coward, she's familiar with threats. So those are our three recruits. We have an urgent notice here that the power plant is generating power without operators assigned. Uh, we can click on Task Tracker and verify that indeed there are these tasks that need to get done, such as engaging the alternator of the combustion plant, loosening the exhaust seal. And they take skills and they also use stats. So in this case, engaging the alternator takes three mind and loosening the exhaust seal takes one spirit. Nobody's assigned to them, which is not going to work out for us in two and a half days when these guys fail. Failing power tasks is particularly bad because generally it causes an explosion or some sort of catastrophic failure. There are also some notices telling us that we need a dining hall because crew are eating directly out of storage, which is wasteful. They're leaving their wrappers everywhere and uh, stuffing their face instead of sitting down at a table like a civilized species. Let's check our crew. We have Lorelai Hardy and Zachariah Brennan. Lorelai Hardy here is puerile. Her whims are selfish and juvenile. And we have a slippery Zachariah Brennan. And you can see he has some subterfuge because he's slippery and he smoothly rejoices in his shenanigans. So we'll follow him on the station and see what those shenanigans are. Now, in terms of assigning someone to the combustion plant, 
we'll need to take a look at a combination of the skills, the personalities, and the stats, or just make a judgment and say, let's put someone there. So let's, let's hire the stalker, uh, because he'll probably get along well with our slippery person. Now that he's hired, we can see he appears in the crew panel. Grant Fry, we can locate him. He's blaming perfectionism, as he would. And we'll assign him to the combustion plan. He's going to work. Now you can also notice that our other two crew, who have been on the station a while, are squatting. This means they don't have anywhere to sleep. So as Grant Fry here works, you can see the task that he's doing must have taken three mind, which is this task here that he's working on and using the physics skill. He's also not doing well uh, in terms of letting our other crew person get a good night's sleep. So Lorelei Hardy uh, will have a hard time regenerating her stats, which is what sleep does, as long as she's trying to sleep in a place that someone else is trying to work. So building a dining hall is something we're definitely going to want to do in addition to building uh, some quarters for some people to sleep. And we can see here, here's the urgent notices and we're going to keep getting them uh, until we solve that problem. We also have a new recruit. We have a Rube. His disruptions are repetitive and foolish. Maybe he would get along with uh, some of these other people. We don't know. We'd have to, we'd have to think about it. We'd have to think about it. Let's check our resupply. So how this works is there are three packages. We've called this internally a temporary acquisition mechanic because in the alpha, we're gonna to wanna to have missions uh, and other things that get resources onto the station. But for now, for purpose of the alpha, you're gonna select a package. That package is going to have some resources in it. The resources are worth points times an amount, which gives us a total value. So then these packages are, in theory, balanced because their, their points totals are the same. But we're going to have to pick one, and we're going to have to put it in a cargo hold. So let's put package B in the module 1 cargo hold. So we'll print it out. And uh, we don't really have time to read this terms of delivery, but if you play the game, I suggest that you do because it tells you how this mechanic works. So now we're getting another resupply in this many days. So let's build our, our, our modules. We definitely need a quarters. We also need a dining hall. Now, unfortunately, as you can see, building these in the same module makes us build both conduits and insulation because the enlisted quarters requires water, meaning conduits, and the cantina requires food, meaning insulation. So we can be a little bit smarter here and build quarters, which require the conduits, not build insulation, so we don't have to pay the maintenance cost of doing it, and instead put something else that also uses conduits, like custodial facilities, which requires water too, so it has some conduits that it gets to share with the enlisted quarters. So construction is not implemented in the alpha, but it's one of the things soon to be added. So we will just assign someone and it'll go, as opposed to generating tasks for construction, as is the design. And we will put this, we'll put this module here. We have three choices because we have these connectors, right? So we're gonna to wanna to put it on this side because we want people to sleep near where the toilets are so they don't have to waste time walking halfway across the station to use the bathroom. So there's a lot of logistic and strategy-based gameplay that has to do with distances, which kinds of plays into the 3D station building aspect. So let's build this, this thing here and we're going to want to find our crew and we're gonna to wanna to assign them to that quarters. So these different colors are because there's three different divisions. There's sciences, command, and operations. 
Uh, right now, we don't have any command jobs implemented. Uh, so, sorry, Lorelei Hardy, uh, you're going to have to work in the custodial facilities and then become yellow. Zachariah Brennan, who's going to squat, instead can sleep here and also work in the custodial facilities. So now we can look at our crew and we can see that they all have been assigned places to work. And don't forget about Grant Fry, who now can get up and go sleep in a bed. We are also going to need a dining hall, and we're probably going to need a maintenance facility. So we can check Task Tracker and verify this. That here's our custodial task that came in. So this is to take one waste out of the toilets and put it into the storage. But also, when our reactor gets its refuel down to zero and it'll burn another fuel, it should generate a maintenance task. The reason it's not generating a maintenance task is that we don't have any fuel in storage. And because we don't have any fuel in storage, there's nothing to generate a task to do. So we should wait until we have a resupply, get a fuel, see the tasks for refueling, and then build our, our maintenance terminal. In the meantime, we can put our recruits in a nice little pile in the corner and see if any of these will come in handy later. Here's a conversation between two characters. So Zachariah Brennan, who is slippery, gives a merry greeting. And Lorelai Hardy languishes in Brennan's glee and then is startled by it. So this is a procedural conversation where the text merely describes the underlying interaction, which produces the statistical result. There's three aspects. There's friendship, love, and respect. And this happens to be on the friendship axis or personal. So you can see over time, they might become personal enemies or personal comrades if their personalities emerges as them getting along. And we have another recruit, a loser. She perceives that she is shunned by her defeats. And we have a resupply. So here's some fuel. We're going to put fuel in this cargo hold. We're going to stamp this form without reading it. And then we are going to check Task Tracker and see indeed we have two maintenance tasks which are generated, these industrial refuels, and nobody's assigned to them. And that's kind of going to be a problem because when our fuel here hits zero, well, it's lights out for the station. So we're looking for someone that has a motor skill to do the refuel. And we also need to build a dining hall and a maintenance shop so that we can assign someone to that job. Because all of these are probably telling us that people are still eating out of storage. And eating out of storage is more wasteful than eating out of a dining hall. So let's build a new module here where have enough food to get a cantina. And we have a maintenance shop. Maintenance shop requires compartments because it uses rare metals. And the cantina requires insulation because it uses food. So it's kind of smart as a strategy to put a cargo hold down here. Since for our cargo hold, we're going to want to hold things like reactives, which also happen to need compartments. So we need to optimize and be smart about how we're using these hull options. If shielding were implemented, we'd probably want to do shielding too, so we could put some contaminants in here. So we'll place it here so that now we have our cantina, our toilet, and our quarters all kind of along the same, the same route. So characters don't have to waste time 
walking an extra half module distance. And we'll also build a connector and we'll put it here. So now they can definitely walk in a nice circle, and not waste any time along their route. The next thing to do is to assign people to that maintenance job before the fuel runs out. So everyone here is kind of working on something. So we're looking for someone that has some motor skill or perhaps engineering or has a personality that we think will get along with other characters. So we have a slippery Zachariah. We have a puerile Lorelei Hardy. And we have Grant Fry, and we're going to check out his personality too. Grant Fry is a stalker. He hides with menacing desire. So it sounds like a, a loser might get along with this crowd. Here's our loser, Melissa Levine. Let's make sure that she does her maintenance tasks. And then she, you can see she's now wearing the operations colors. We can check task tracker and verify that there she goes. She's starting her refuel. It also so happens that crewman Grant Fry finished his last reactor task, so now he has about 0.2 days, 0.27 days until the new power cycle starts. And then he gets the tasks all over again, so he's working on kind of a, a three-day sprint. There goes Melissa Levine. This ball has the fuel in it, and she's refueling. So it's three, and as she does the tasks, it'll go up to four and five. So a large part of the strategic gameplay is building a station of a certain size and getting it to stabilize. And by stabilize, the crew go about their day, they do the tasks that they're supposed to do. So in this case, Melissa Ravine is repairing the conduits. So if these conduits break because nobody repairs them, then the fluids leak out. If these compartments break because nobody repairs them, then whatever reactives happen to be in the storage or in these sections will react and cause an explosion. So we need to make sure that everyone's kind of getting on top of their tasks. And if they're not on top of their tasks, we can follow them around in their day and figure out what's going wrong and hopefully fix it before something blows up. And we're going to totally hire the sketchy person because he is shady and we have a stalker and someone who's slippery. So they're definitely going to all, all have that in common. And because they have that in common, if that facet comes out in their interactions, they will become good friends. So we should build another module. And we're going to build a new deck so you can see what a new deck looks like. Unfortunately, we don't have enough nonmetals for this deck. So we're going to plop in resupply. And we are going to select the nonmetals. And also, there's some more fuel. So just as an example, we have two cargo holds here. This is our, our starter station cargo hold that had all of the hull options. Whereas the cargo hold we built did not have conduits. So if we put something that was a fluid, such as noble gas, which is a fluid, in this cargo hold, it meant the conduits can't use it because the module doesn't have conduits. So someone would have to get the custodial task to move those noble gas resource by hand as opposed to just using the conduits, which is automatic. So there's also strategy on that level 
Um, the difference being the reason we didn't put conduits is because we shouldn't have the maintenance task for them unless we really need them because everything you build has an associated cost and you have to be cognizant of that cost and not build too quickly. So let's put our fuel and nonmetals in this module. The reason we're putting it in this module is because our reactor is in module one. And if our reactor is close to our fuel, we avoid the maintenance and custodial penalty of moving that, of moving that fuel from the storage to where it's supposed to go. So just an example of what that might look like. Is that you see there's this blockers list here. So for some of these tasks, let's take a look at our older tasks. Oh, there's an example. So you have this organic restock, which is restocking the food. Remember, everything that happens on the station happens via a job. Needs someone to transport the food to where it gets restocked to. So there's actually two tasks associated with this. Whereas if we were smart and we had the food in the same storage module as also the dining hall, then you wouldn't have the maintenance, they wouldn't have the custodial task to move the resource from here to there. And we can actually go into our storage app, and in our storage app we can transfer a resource. So we can say, well, let's be smart here, and let's move our nine food up front all in one batch as opposed to doing it one at a time. Now we can click on Task Tracker and we can see that there's this task here at the bottom. This organic transport for nine food should prevent these additional custodial tasks from being generated. So now we're going to build that connector now that we have the non-metals and get to the upper deck. Now our station looks like this. And now we're ready to add a second deck with some new stuff. So let's take a look at our crew and see how everyone's doing before we decide what it is we're going to build. So you can see Grant Fry here is exhausted, either because he's had a bunch of conversations that exhausted his body, or because he's had a very far distance to walk, or because he's done too many tasks that require B, although he is assigned to the combustion plant which doesn't have any of those tasks, so it's probably something like this. So the puerile Lorelei Hardy makes an anecdotal demand. She's puerile, she's demanding something, and then the stalker just smirks. So in this case, their personalities got along, where the stalker thought it was funny that the puerile Laurel Hardy is making this demand. So these interactions again are emergent and it's not always clear until they happen what's going to happen. But everything is very rigorous and very systemic and there's really no random roles in that system and only one result. So this is literally just two people having a conversation and conveying information and then having trait growth based on that information being conveyed. Here is a dreary Natalia Hay, grave problems fill her imagination. And she will probably get along with our loser. And the reason she will get along with our loser is that our loser has defeats. And our dreary individual has problems. So those are two things that might be synonyms in the system. So we can hire hire this person and she'll might get along. We can go into module builder here 
and see what we need to build our next module. Let's figure it out. So one good thing to build is a garden. What a garden does is a garden gives characters a place to go meditate and work out their personality issues. So if you're following someone around and you're figuring out what's going wrong with them, you can see they might have a psych of one, in this case it's zero, and it totally depends on what's, what's happening in the station. So if it's a psych of one, it means they need to go work out their psychological problems, which they do by meditating in a garden. So a garden's kind of a good thing to have. You can see he was waiting for the bathroom, so they were queuing up outside. So something to do is follow around Grant Fry and figure out why, why his body is so low. Since it might become an issue, we could probably promote him. And because he only has one trait, promotes are great, gated by traits, you only see one traits on each of these characters, but they can have up to five and that is how you know about them and you can only promote people that you know. So let's promote him and we can promote him to crewman first class which is the highest of this rank category. He would need a second trait to get into NCO. Let's build some possibly a garden, possibly some quarters not quite sure yet, but we're definitely going to put this into either cargo hold one because it has conduits and it has water, or maybe we would want this cargo hold uh, because the food would put it next to the dining hall. So that's kind of the strategy here. So in this case, we'd have to, we'd have to move the water to somewhere that had conduits. In the other case, we'd have to move the food. We wouldn't have to, it would just be smart to uh, move it to where there was the, the dining facilities. So let's put it here. I care more about the water than the food. Let's stamp it and send it away. So just so you can see kind of more of the, the personality interaction we can hire some more people. I hired them because their personality seemed like a good fit. We don't have any jobs for them, but we can assign them to quarters and they'll, they'll walk around the station. He's waffling, which gives you an insight into his personality. And in fact, as he undergoes trait growth, that will be some small factor. Let's see what we need for a garden. We need waste and salts. So Brennan is giving some tricky advice and Hayes absolves Brennan from her intrigue because it was tricky advice and then taps her foot because she's bored, because she's a boring person, because she's dreary. And then the stats are what they are based on how that interaction played out in the system. Since there is a relationship between all of these different facets of the personality. Here we see Brian Foster is remembering the good times. And Zachariah Brennan is restocking the cantina. Checking in on Task Tracker, we can see we're not getting too behind in our tasks, although none of these combustion tasks are getting done and it's going to fail in not too long. So we can up the priority because we don't want them to fail. 
and we can micromanage Grant Fry here to see why is it he's not doing his job. Because he's socializing. So uh, Crewman Levine makes a predictable point. She's a loser. Predictability is one of her facets. And the stalker glowers, because that's one of his facets. And he loses an M, which is something that he is going to need to do his job. So that wasn't a great, a great interaction for him. And there he goes. So we're going to have to monitor the situation and check back uh, at the top of day seven. So Lewis Farrell is salacious. His alluring energy causes impropriety. And let's see, see where he fits in. So, uh, for example, improprieties is kind of a synonym with shenanigans here. So they'll probably, they'll probably get along. Let's find out. And every station needs a good coward. So let's finally get around to hiring Liliana Johnson. Lewis keeps it real. He keeps it real. And see there, they're getting along. They're getting along. Meanwhile, you can see the coward capitulates. Uh, because this is an alpha, this GUI is kind of cut off here. Something to mention is that all of these are gray box GUIs that you're seeing. So she's picking up the slack. And uh, let's hope that's actually what she's doing. So let's put Lewis Farrell here in some quarters. And we can check to see our quarters are all almost full. And then we'll have Liliana Johnson picking up the slack, joining the quarters. We'll do our resupply. We needed salt and waste for our garden. We can put this in the second cargo hold because we don't have anything that's fluid here that we care about. Checking our crew, no one's picked up a second trait. So we don't have anyone to promote. We can check task tracker and see how he's doing. He's starting his 22 point task. You can see he also has task estimates that he's doing based on a combination of his personality and his skill. So it's not just whether he's good at the skill, it's whether he thinks he's good at the skill based on his personality. So that's another facet to keep in mind that you can trust these estimates up to a point. Again, depending on, on who he is. And he has 0.6 days to get it done, or this, this video is going to end in a remarkable explosion. There he goes. He has enough stats to kind of do everything, so it's really a race against time. Especially because we upped the priority, you can see he needs to sleep and he needs to eat, but in Task Tracker here, we've told him, go ahead and just do these and worry about sleeping and eating later. And with a little luck, he'll get it all done. Half a day left.
see someone's just waking up, going to the bathroom. And she had a psych of one, which means she'll get some use out of this garden. He's loosening the turbine ducts. Oh, it's going to really come down to the wire here. And he really needs to go to sleep. So, Crewman Hardy gives an anecdotal distraction as someone who's puerile, and the loser cautiously counters it. So this is kind of a complex interaction where you have some stats going up and some stats going down. It's entirely dependent on what, what happens in the system. So how the facets of the personality align or don't align determine what these scores are. In this case, there was some alignment, but also some things that were conflicting. So because Liliana Johnson's a coward, Johnson is making a timid concession, something that cowards might do. And a salacious Lewis Farrell is justifying Johnson's helplessness. He's perceiving that Johnson is helpless because Johnson is timid. Let's check Task Tracker one last time. And we are going to fail in an hour. So let's watch this. Watch this clock and see if there's going to be some flames. So he probably wouldn't get along with any of these guys. And if, if our reactor operator saves the day, then we will build that garden. So Foster says some tricky mumblings because he's sketchy. And then the puerile Lorelei Hardy marvels at the mumblings because she is so inexperienced. She has no idea what's going on. The stalker says a salty mystery and Crewman Levine differentiates the mystery. All the tasks got complete. So Grant Fry is now going to sleep because he really needs to sleep and he's probably going to pay this penalty uh, when he wakes up. So with these conversations, you can see it's hitting these stats that the characters need to do for their jobs. And then also hitting a bunch of other things like love, morale, and spending time doing the conversation. So Zachariah Brennan is transporting that eight food. And we will hit up resupply and we will need some maybe waste and water for our garden. We should probably check so we're not wrong. Here is the garden. It just needs some waste. You can see this cargo holds also filling up so we're probably going to want another cargo hold in not too long. So because a garden has water, waste, and salt, it has the trifecta here needing conduits, insulation, and compartments. So there's going to be a lot of maintenance tasks generated by this garden. And we want to be smart. We don't want to put it on top of this module because this is our module without any conduit. So if you put the garden here, whoever has to restock that water is going to have to push a ball around. If we put it here, the conduits will automatically draw the water. So that's a much smarter place to put it. And now some characters will go use the garden. And maybe get some traits and then we can promote someone to an NCO and see what that's like. In the meantime, we can admire our double decker station here. It has four modules and two connectors. The power plant, 
is generating some power. And look at that. Its conduits are going to break soon, and its compartments are going to break a little bit after that. And it also has a fuel crisis. So these are all things we're going to have to kind of diagnose and figure out what's going on. So here is, the, here is the repair. We have Melissa Levine, our loser, doing the repair and the refuel. So she's doing the refuel first. The conduits are probably the biggest crisis, and we'll give them a high priority. And also, let's, let's give all these things priority. And let's see what she's doing for pausing her task. She's giving a relevant monologue. She's a loser, so she's giving a monologue. She's relevant because she's accurate. And then Brian Foster reaches for Melissa's point of view. And again, this is a, a complex conversation. Our toilets just backed up, which is not great. It's at 10 out of 10 waste. And somebody is not doing their job emptying the toilets. So let's see who that is. That is Lorelei Hardy is custodial worker number one. And Zachariah is custodial worker number two. So we do have two more crew that aren't really doing anything, but they are using the toilets and eating. So let's build another custodial facilities and put them to work. And you can see the conduits and the compartments were repaired, so another crisis has been averted. Let's put a toilet on this deck, that might be smart. Let's build a custodial facilities. And since we're gonna to wanna to promote someone when they get a second trait, we can put in some NCO quarters. Now, where are we gonna put this? We can't really put it here. And the reason we can't put it here is because there aren't any conduits. So we're gonna to have to maybe build another deck. Let's see what comes up on resupply. Well, non-metals and fuel are always useful. So let's hurry up. Cohen Curry is a great and beautiful soul. Again, doesn't sound like he would get along with the crew that we have. Although we could hire them just to see the hilarity. So we'll build a third deck so we can have this nice line of conduits. And on this deck we'll put an NCO quarters, we'll put some toilets, and we'll put a custodial facilities. We will assign our two characters who are not doing anything but still consuming food and using the toilets onto the custodial facilities and maybe they will clean out the toilets. So now we look like this and with all those things that we've just built we're going to generate a ton more tasks so let's hope our crew is up to the job or up to the task. So now Liliana Johnson is in the custodial facilities and Lewis Farrell is also in the custodial facilities. We can see that Melissa Levine is going to meditate because she does have some psych to work out. The other thing we can do at this stage is hit shift and just see kind of how everyone is walking through the station. So we like to call this the ant farm view. We might need another dining facility soon as well. 
So looking at Task Tracker, all of our repairs are done and we should see that our new custodial workers have picked up the tasks that we just generated. So there's some automatic task distribution going on. So you can see that this, this conduit is now at one of two. So let's see if we can find it. Here it is. So there is a blocker chain. So the non-metal used for this repair needs to be transported. And the transport needs to first be packed. So first, Liliana Johnson's going to pack that non-metal. I'm going to transport it to the repair site where repair person Melissa Levine will use it in the repair. And that's how the tasks are set up, that there really is logistics that one has to think about when one builds their station. So we can watch this for a while and just get a sense of the flow of the station and see if anyone's picked up any new traits. Oh, and here people have. So people went and worked out their personal issues at the gardens. We have some characters we can promote. Zachariah Brennan is a salty dog. His course instructions are persuasive. You can see he's picked up some logistics skill from pushing around resources and packing resources. We have a droopy loser. She is gloomy, lackluster, and insignificant. And we have a prudish, sketchy person. He dramatically faints when appropriate. So this is a personality that he's picked up just based on, like as we've been doing things on the desk, the characters have been doing things. And based on the things that the characters do, their own personalities are kind of changing and growing over time. So our coward is obsequiously disregarding the position, obsequious because he's a coward, disregarding it because he's a coward, and the position is linked to the stance of Lewis Farrell. So Lewis Farrell takes this stance that's convenient, that's his improprieties coming in, it's a convenient stance, and Liliana Johnson is just disregarding it. So they're not, they're not gonna like each other uh, very long. And you can see here's an example of two characters who are getting along, they're professional colleagues. So our loser, our droopy loser, Melissa Levine, and our puerile Lorelei Hardy uh, are in fact good friends. They formed a little clique here and they're professional colleagues. So our Galilei Evans is openly bold in the face of defeat. Again, that's something that will probably get along with a loser. So uh, let's see who we want to promote. Let's take Melissa Levine and promote her because she is in the maintenance shop and that's such a key job. We can say you're now chief loser, Melissa Levine, and you have no quarters now because we just promoted you. Now we can put you in these NCO quarters. So our dreary Natalia Hayes has a somber fantasy, somber because she's dreary. And our loser acutely isolates Natalia's dignity. So this is a case where from Melissa's standpoint, the, the somber fantasy is being perceived as, as having dignity. And that's what Melissa Levine is isolating, is isolating the dignity that she perceives Natalia has in that somber fantasy. And you can see everyone kind of moving about through the station. Zachariah Brennan is debating the rules. And uh, we have 
some personal comrades here, rabble Natalia Hayes and coward Liliana Johnson. So Natalia Hayes also picked up another trait, which is rabble. She follows the craziest rant. That's what a rabble, rabble, rabble does. Checking in on task tracker. You might have to again micromanage Grant Fry here, so he's not going to get us all blown up in a day. I mean, it would be a good ending to this video if he did, but let's, let's hope he doesn't. <laughs> we do have another resupply. Let's give ourselves some water and some food. And let's put our water in our conduit cargo hold. While we're at it, let's clean up this desk a bit. Now our desk is a bit cleaner and we can we have another promote we can do so we can find someone who's doing something important and promote them. So let's promote our other custodial facility worker who will then share a room. So the slippery salty dog or Natalia Hayes, who is mourning her dreams. That sounds like someone who would do well rooming with a loser. They have a lot in common. So let's promote. Make her a petty officer. Checking in on Task Tracker. Looks like he might pull it off again. Assuming no one comes in here and bothers him. So Brennan thinks the callow tangent is stupid and ruggedly judges it being a salty dog. Once again, we have some things to deal with, these conduits and these compartments. We need to find out if they're going to get fixed. Because now that we have so many more modules, we have so many more repair tasks and we only have one repair person on those tasks. So that's another way. It's another way to lose. Yeah, I think Grant Fry will manage this. And let's make sure Melissa Levine knows to get all of her tasks done too. So in this case, the task is blocked by a transport. She can't repair those compartments because somebody needs to move the resources, which is Liliana Johnson. So we can see Liliana Johnson, why are you not moving your resources? And she's not moving her resources for the repair because she's doing something else. She is stocking the cantina, which is this thing right here. So we could say, well, 
stocking the cantina is a bit lower priority. But she's almost done, so we could let her do it. Now this is another blocker chain that has to be managed. And it looks like the combustion plant tasks were once again done, so we don't have to worry about that for another cycle. So here's another shyster. Uh, he takes joy in unfair bargains. And he is, of course, coming across as a counselor. Sounds like someone that would get along with our crew. So our coward and our salacious Lewis Farrell are losing some friendship. And there's a point at which when the relationships get very bad, you're going to need to separate them and keep them out of the same quarters so they don't run into each other and they don't hit each other's stats. You can click on them and see that that's exactly, that's exactly what's happened. We have another reactor power cycle that started up. And our station looks like it's humming along. So we have another resupply. Now we can start being choosy about this. Figure out what we want. I think it might be smart to put food in this cargo hold so that people aren't pushing it from this one. But we'll, we'll lose out on, on the water. Let's see, do we have enough water here? Yeah, we have 51 water, which should supply all of our needs for now. See what's going on. Grant whispers a fierce secret, and Brian seriously gushes over the secret. So that's a good result. They might become romantically involved. Our prudish Brian Foster and our stalker Grant Fry. Because these are composite personalities. They have many, many different facets which may or may not line up with each other. We have two people not working, so we might want to put them to work. We can check task tracker to see what needs to be done. It's probably maintenance is going to be our biggest problem. See how Melissa Levine is doing. So it looks like her bars are all full. And let's take a look at her sheet. 
because she is kind of the most crucial person on the station at this moment. So you can see she's picked up some motor skills that she didn't have before as she's been refueling everything. And she'll also pick up repair as she goes on and repairs. What these tasks are also doing, they're changing her personality. So every time she completes some tasks, based on the skill that's used and how she feels about that skill, her personality will get modified. So she'll start to gravitate. Her personality will part, in part gravitate towards the tasks that she's doing based on the skills that it used, in addition to her personality changing based on all these interactions and the various thoughts that she has throughout the day. Her efforts are perfect and superior now we could we could hire someone like this on the station just to see just to see what they do. Just to see our paragon tell everyone off. Eleanor Parks. We will assign you to some quarters. And we will let you go about your day stargazing and uh, interacting with all these people on the station. And because, because the personalities all interact with each other, our Paragon is going to pull people towards his personality just as all the other crew will pull him towards their or her towards their personality. Checking in on Task Tracker. We are kind of getting some backup here. We probably grew a bit too fast uh, while making this video just to show everyone what's going on. <clears throat> now let's try and get on top of it. So what do we need? Well, we could probably use another custodial facilities, which again has that water requirement. We could put it here so it could join it could join up with those conduits. So we could do a custodial facilities and we could also put some storage because we're going to need some more storage soon. And we do not have enough we do not have enough base metals and we do not have enough paper. Paper is something that's very important to the Astro Base. So we're looking for non-metals and paper, or base metals and paper. We can probably get rid of all these recruits since we're not going to use them. The other thing to do is to build a reactor. You can see here that there's only about a thousand power left on this reactor. So we need to make sure that whatever we build is under a thousand power or we build a new power plant. And then we have something else to monitor. So if you're wondering why not why not make a small station and just and just keep it active, that's definitely a legitimate play style. It's just that as people grow over time, they're going to kind of outgrow their quarters and outgrow their modules, and you know going to want something new. So Crewman Farrell makes a superficial allegation, and the salty dog uh, digests it. So in this case, none of their personality facets interacted with each other, which is why it's just zeros. 
across the board, but the conversation did take three minutes out of their day, which is three minutes they could have spent working uh, or doing something else. So all these conversations do have an implicit penalty, which is, hey, if you talk to someone in the hallway, then you're not doing your job. So our loser has a singular complaint and slippery Zachariah Brennan deceptively recoils from Levine's weirdness. Weirdness because she's a loser making a singular complaint. And he's deceptively recoiling because he is slippery, leaving this interaction. So in this case, they both got a bit of a spirit boost, but uh, kind of physically exhausted them in this conversation. So again, uh, we're in alpha, which is why uh, there are some GUIs which get cut off. And uh, But you can see that Liliana Johnson is making, making friends uh, with whoever this is they're talking to. What do we want? We wanted some paper from this resupply. We wanted to check task tracker to uh, see what's going wrong. So there she goes, transporting two waste. You can see it is reducing her body stat as she walks. Her morale's quite high, so she's been completing her tasks and is getting a good night's sleep and replenishing her bars. And there she goes to the bathroom. So there's some paper, some base metals, some fuel, but look at that. We don't have enough room in this storage container to house that package. So we're gonna to have to put it in our other cargo hold. She patiently accommodates excuses. And if you recall, we have a coward on the station who also is a bit accommodating. So our permissive Michelle Castillo might get along well with our coward. So, Melissa Levine is doing well. Having a lot of the, all of the maintenance of this station, which means she's walking around from top to bottom doing all of the tasks that come up. So we will take some load off and we will build something. So first we should build some custodial facilities and we should also do a storage because we have some paper now. And we can put some conduits and insulation Because we want to be connected to the conduits, we can put it here. And now we can go through and assign some of our crew that aren't working anywhere to those jobs. So we can take Zachariah Brennan, who isn't doing anything yet, put him here. And we can take Eleanor Parks who also isn't doing anything and put him 
there as well. Or we could use Brian Foster because he does have more traits. But you can see, based on his life cycle, he's not using his body very efficiently. Whereas with Liliana Johnson or with Eleanor Parks, she's being, her, her route, her day, and the people she talks to gives her more of this stat. And this is a very useful stat for custodial people because they, they have to walk around a lot. Already she's getting to work, she's recycling three waste, and she's having a conversation. So the loser, Melissa Levine, takes a relevant precaution, and our paragon harnesses Chief Levine's vigilance. So these two are getting along, and you can see it's because she perceives that she is shunned for her defeats, so she does have some perception, uh, and also our paragon Eleanor Parks has something that, that corresponds to that. So Eleanor Parks is looking at this relevant precaution and saying, hey, that's some good vigilance you're having. So they're, they're actually getting along. Maybe there will be some sort of odd couple. Do we have any task backup? Looks like we have some things to repair. We probably want to build another repair shop. And maybe we could put the repair shop here on this deck, on deck, on deck one, above the other repair shop. So we'll need, we'll need rare metals. So let's hit resupply. Let's wait. Her crimes are out of anger and cruelty. And she has some interrogation, which makes sense. So we wanted rare metals. We can put rare metals in our new cargo hold, although our new cargo hold does not have compartments. Uh, so if we did that, there would be an explosion because you see there's three reactives here and they would react. So we can't do that. We have to put them uh, in a cargo hold that has, that has compartments. So now we have enough rare metals for two maintenance shops. They both use compartments. We can be smart. Is there anything else we need? Perhaps a cafeteria, but then we will also need some, some conduits and some insulation, and this would not be on the conduit graph. So that water would have a hard time being restocked. It would require someone to actually restock it, so that's probably not too smart. We're probably going to need another power section, so let's double check on that. Yes, we will definitely need a new power section, and we'll need to make sure that, again, someone is on top of these conduits and compartments.
So our power use is currently minus 100, which I think is within tolerance. And we can build some sort of plant here. So cold fusion reactor requires coolant and noble gas, maybe. Those are fluids, and again, we have that same problem, so we should pick something that isn't going to have that problem. Let's do a good old-fashioned combustion plant, because we already have one, and we're already stockpiling fuel. Fuel needs compartments, which these maintenance shops also need, so I think we're, I think we're good. In the combustion plant, right, because fuel is also perishable, so that's why the combustion plant required insulation. Although insulation does not generate a lot of repair tasks, so we can, we can do this. We can build two, and we cannot use them until we need them. Now we'll put him here. And you can see these are not turned on, but they're there waiting in case we need them. And since we are kind of falling behind in our maintenance, we can take these two no assignment people, Brian Foster, put Brian Foster on Maintenance shop one. And put Natalia Hayes here, who's sleeping, on maintenance shop two. Now here's what our, our station looks like. And if we put a module here in the middle, it will be on the conduit graph. So that's something to think about. Maybe we'll have some more advanced quarters if people pick up traits. This is a bug uh, with the photo booth where pictures are taken because we are still in alpha. Well, it looks like at least we can build another NCO quarters. However, again, building another module means having to do some more tasks. So let's wait and see if Task Tracker stabilizes before we, before we take that on. So this is another opportunity to have a problem. More conduits that need repair and some compartments that need repair. And since you can see it's being blocked by this transport task, this is a transport task to move the nonmetals to the repair site. We're going to want to go through the blocker chain and set everybody to high priority. And also with, uh, we'll do the same here. What this is saying is that they're not going to waste time during their day talking or doing other stuff, they're just going to get right down to business. Here's what our station looks like with everyone on it.
Now this is someone that might be a good power plant operator for our second fuel plant because combustion plants do take environmental as a skill. Although perhaps his conspicuous pleasures of the mind won't jive well with some of our other people. Speaking of everyone, let's see how they're all doing. Like for example, Brian Foster. Well, he's uh, gonna be exhausted at some point. Not yet, but he's getting there. And there is a leak. So we have a leak. People are talking instead of working. That conduit's just hit zero out of two non-metals. So we should probably find that task and make sure it gets fixed very quickly. That's compartments. That's the conduits. And it's blocked. It's blocked by Zachariah Brennan who is going to work. So let's hope uh, this is what Zachariah Brennan ends up doing with his time. And he's not, he's doing some organic packing. So let's suspend all of his tasks so he does the one that we want. Suspend him. So now he should be doing this one. So they're getting along. Lorelei Hardy has picked up a sociopath trait, apparently, and is getting along with our salacious Lewis Farrell. find you. So she started out as puerile and she picked up sociopath. This is because of all these conversations she's been having with all of these other people on the station have pulled her personality in that direction. Brian Foster meanwhile is respecting the silence. So we can go back and see why, why isn't this being repaired. Zachariah Brennan is transporting the one non-metals to the repair site. So another thing we could have done when building the station is put more storage units throughout the station and then transport all of these non-metals instead of one at a time just doing it in a big batch and then the repair guy can go there, make the repair and not require uh, transport guy to do it and where is he going did we actually say that the wrong task was the one to be used probably so we were actually looking for the conduits in deck zero module two and we up prioritized the tasks in deck zero module four so that is our fault Here is the one we actually wanted. So we can have him do that next. Once we get the functionality to rename sections, this will be easier to untangle. Yeah, definitely a somber report uh, is something that describes the situation and uh, the slippery guy is suspiciously brightening as you might expect a slippery person to do. The other thing we can do to get this conduit fixed is to try and reassign it. So Lorelei Hardy, our sociopath, might be someone who could do it. 
who's kind of in the middle of transporting one waste, which we care about a lot less. She's emptying a toilet. Now she's starting on the packing task, and we can say also do the transport task. There it is. So it's better to make sure your conduits don't break than to uh, have to fix them. Because what it's doing, it's leaking out water. So you can click on this and say, oh, there's there's actually a leak here in these custodial facilities and once this custodial facilities leaks out of water then we're going to be in real trouble. His preferences are reflected in his fantasy. So we have a dreamer with some admin skill we can put off to the side. There she is transporting the one non-metals to the repair site. Hopefully she won't get in a conversation that totally disrupts her. So a provoking distraction is not something we needed right now in our stalker guffaws. And you can see that their personalities aligned in this instance. He guffawed at the distraction. There she goes, she's moving the non-metals to the repair site. And now we should have someone actually doing the repair. So there she is, Natalia Hayes, repairing those conduits as we wanted. And now the conduits have stopped leaking, so there's no more conduit leak. And as a cap, uh, Natalia Hayes gives a carefree endorsement, pretty carefree about the situation. And the salacious Lewis Farrell is flaunting the extravagance. So now they're professional colleagues. They've had a lot of conversations and they're giving each other respect and morale. Even if we might not like their personalities, they certainly like each other. And that's what management is about. So we have solved that crisis. Now we can check task tracker and see What's next to fix? Looks like there's going to be a lot. More things to repair and more things to do. But this is what it means to be a space administrator and keeping everything running. Once again, we'll find the conduits in deck zero module one and uh, the conduits in deck zero module two and see why they are not getting done. Well, that's deck zero module one. That's gonna get done soon because it is, it is in the same section as storage, which means we won't need any sort of custodial task to move the resources about. And you can see the spatial layout uh, plays a huge difference. Her quarters are there and she's walking, she's walking all the way over here. So we might, we might want some more NCO quarters and then kind of position our characters around the station more strategically might be a thing to do if we want to optimize this. So we had another repair we needed to do. There was another conduits that needed repair.
deck 2, module 14, and deck 0, module 2. So these are our conduits. And we can unsuspend this task and find out why Eleanor Parks has paused her task. So she's eating, that's a pretty good excuse. Our salacious Lewis Farrell is a personal comrade with Lorelei Hardy. But in this instance, their personality facets didn't match up, so they did take some hits. So Farrell makes a preferential comment, and Hardy disregards the comment. You could look at their personalities and figure out why this is happening, if you really wanted to. It's entirely systemic. There's no roles going on. It's just facets of personalities being aligned and then words selected to represent what happened in the interaction. Now we're starting to get some nice people, cordial Dante Green, which probably wouldn't play well with a sociopath, just saying. question is who do we who do we like more whether we like our sociopath or not if they're effective at their job then that's good enough so that's a bug these combustion plants are turned off they should not be burning fuel but they are good to know So you can see that cantina is going to need a restock pretty soon. We have one cantina for like all of this. Another conduits and uh, some more conduits and some toilets and some conduits. So a lot of a lot of repairs need to happen around the station. So let's take a look at our crew. Let's see if anyone is unassigned to anything. So maybe we'll want to turn on one of those combustion plants and build some more facilities. Let's say hypothetically we were to build some more some more custodial facilities and only require conduits. We have enough water. Let's see what our other options are. We have two quarters here. One's full. One is almost full. Our stalker has a mysterious discourse.
we have some NCO quarters here that are that are full. So we could we could afford to hire someone if we think they would be good at reactors. Uh, and it looks like a cordial personality, that environmental skill. Or Epicurean that has an environmental skill. So I feel like his conspicuous pleasures are of the mind. The fact that he's conspicuous about things won't play well with all of our stealth crew that are into subterfuge and into being sketchy. So let's hire the cordial person instead. Then we can assign him to, let's say, this combustion plant, turns it on, and we will also put him in the remaining empty quarters. So now if we check task tracker, there will be two power cycles. There will be one for the first combustion plant, and then one for the second. So you can see they're right here. So again, we're kind of falling behind on our tasks. That's something else to look at. Although nothing is exploding just yet, it definitely will need to be solved before too long. The characters are eating out of storage because we have one very small cantina trying to service all of these, all of these people. So that's an interesting thing here. Elliot Blackwell is clingy. Once he picks something up, he can't let it go. So of course he's into pathology, nursing, and genetics. He's very clingy. He picks up diseases, I guess. And we have another conduit leak. So this is in Deck 2, Module 14. Let's find it. There it is. Eleanor Parks needs to finish this transport of the non-metals to the repair site. Then once that happens, Brian Foster, when he's done eating, will have to walk up there and do the repair. So, Eleanor Parks has finished the transport. They're now romantic adversaries of Salty Dog and the Sociopath. So Zachariah makes a coarse connection. He's coarse because he's a salty dog. And our sociopath mentions Zachariah's ruggedness because it is a coarse connection and the sociopath does not like that coarseness. But she does, so this is a case where actually they are romantic adversaries probably because they have multiple personality traits and this is just a case where even though they're adversaries they, they got along in this situation. So Lori, Lorelei mentions Zachariah's ruggedness in a positive light, so you can see that gives the, boonet, the bonus to the stats and the bonus to love. Our coward is making a neutral concession, and our cordial person sensitively parlays. So let's see about this maintenance task. He's in a conversation instead of working. He's a bit sketchy, and he at least gained one S out of that. I don't know if it was worth four minutes, but it was better than losing something. So 
So Brian Foster is sleeping instead of doing this. Let's see if there's someone else we can give it to. Natalia Hayes is doing such a good job. I feel like I feel like we should give her a promote. But she needs another trait to do that. She only has two traits. Lots to do. Lots getting done. So I think we're definitely going to have to get ourselves out from under this task pile up, which will probably be deadly. How we do that is by solving the issues that exist on the station. So part of the problem well, there's nothing in this storage except for waste being moved from these toilets. So one thing we could do is we could, we haven't had a resupply in a while because we haven't really needed it. We could find some non-metals and we could put them, we could put them in that cargo hold. Unfortunately, there's also antimatter in this package. And antimatter is a reactive, but there's no compartments. So I'll show you what happens. Just to have some fun here. So this is the the antimatter, which is not having any compartments to hold it in. And if uh, another resource, which has that property, that reactive property, gets in this storage unit, there's going to be an explosion. So we're really going to have to watch out for that. But we do have non-metals here that can be used uh, for restock. And actually, we should probably take this food and push this food into this storage section so that it can be used to restock the cantina directly. So let's do that. Well, he now has a leak. Fortunately, because we have non-metals in the storage, you can see the coolant's leaking out. Because we do have non-metals in the storage, Nobody is going to have to push a ball of non-metals from like here or here. They can just go there and do the repair. 
So we should find that repair. Task Tracker definitely needs an upgrade. Again, this is an alpha, and uh, we're getting into the mid game, and uh, this is really the point at which uh, we're continuing to build the simulation is from the mid game. So it makes sense that the GUI is starting to be stretched to its limits. So we're looking for something at deck two, module 17. probably an old task. There's deck two module 14. Here's deck two module 17. And there are blockers and there are blockers because this task was generated before we moved the resources. So the tasks are already in the system. We're just going to have to suffer through this and find out what Zachariah Brennan is doing. Zachariah Brennan is not presently fixing what we want him to fix, so we can, instead of doing a basic restock, we can down-prioritize that, and actually we can suspend it. We can suspend it so that hopefully he'll now pick up this task. So let's see what he's doing instead. He's going to meditate. I guess he didn't like us ordering him around so much. So we can unassign him. Good old Lorelei Hardy. See what you're going to do. You're going to work. And are you going to work on this task? Probably not. You're going to work on some industrial packing of some fuel. And we can say, uh, don't do this task anymore, but she's already done it. Now we'll see if she's doing the task we want her to do. There she goes. She's going to move some non-metals. And then we're going to get that conduit leak fixed before all of our coolant flows out. She needs to sleep, but we've upped the priority of this task because it's so important to us. And she meets a friend, but in this case they have an argument. The sociopath is just coldly head-tracking Pharrell here, who's using a fresh colloquialism. Like, get her done. Repair that conduit. It's not a really a fresh colloquialism. Krizunk the Badunk. That's more fresh. Crewman Hardy makes a whimsical demand. And, uh... Chief Levine foresaw the demand. They're professional colleagues, and that's just a conversation that they have in their daily lives that impacts the stats that they use to do their jobs. So let's find out who's supposed to repair this thing. Natalia Hayes is sleeping and has a lot to sleep off.
So let's let's see. Our option is to unassign or have somebody else do it, but that won't even guarantee success of the job. So maybe she's already reduced to sleep one. Once she hits sleep zero, she'll wake up and fix that conduit before all of our coolant here leaks out and all of our water here leaks out. Once, once this water leaks out of the custodial facilities, it's going to be a real nightmare. We have a new recruit, Fickle. Her positions are suspiciously unstable. Talia Hayes is still sleeping. So our, our station has a lot of friends and enemies. And again, because this is the alpha, uh, it would be nice to see what their relationships are in like a list, but that feature is currently not implemented. I hope you help us get there. Is that, is that someone fixing the conduits? She's eating from storage. Well, at least she's eating from storage where she's going to want to fix these conduits. She's grabbing a snack before fixing the conduits. Where is she going? Is she going to fix different conduits? You're supposed to be working on this. What are you working on instead? This is what you're doing. And we really don't need you doing this industrial refuel. So we're going to suspend the task. And then hopefully you're going to pick up the task that we want you to do, which is this task. We don't want you to do this either. There you go. Now you're doing the task that we want you to do. You're going to have to go all the way back up. Walk all the way back to where you were and fix those conduits. This is what a good project manager does. Make sure that people do the tasks that they're supposed to be doing not doing other tasks that they would rather do for their own personal preferences. In this case, Natalia Hayes, you can see what she's into. So if you didn't notice, our store, our dining section has totally not been restocked because I've been prioritizing all of these conduit fixes. So it's out of food, and because it's out of food, it needs a restock. Everyone's eating from storage, which means they're not only wasting food, but they're generating these super annoying notices. So anyway, the conduit leak has been fixed, and now let's let's get a Let's get a resupply. We haven't had one of those in a while. Nothing really that relevant to us right now. But let's let's see if we can build like a, a dining facility or something. Like a mess hall. That would be great. Except we need paper. I believe there was a resupply of paper. There's some paper. We can put them in cargo hold one. And we better we better do this quickly. We have like uh and we didn't get we didn't get through our inbox in time. We let our 
our stuff back up. Edgar Doe, Thierry, he is generous with his dramatic lamentations. Let's see if we got some more paper. We did not get more paper because we weren't on top of our resupply. chuck these notices. And the other thing we could do is we could find, oh, what, what happened? Something definitely blew up while I was shuffling my paperwork. You can see that, oh, our reactor got out of fuel. Because our reactor got out of fuel, there's a, probably a brownout in this, in this module. Or it exploded. Let's check Task Tracker. Yeah, it definitely exploded here. So what happened is while we were messing with our inbox, Dante Green failed to complete his tasks. Because he failed to complete his tasks, there was an explosion. And that explosion uh, killed some of our crew. So it looks like that's a, that's a good place to wrap up. Uh, thank you, thank you for joining and watching our station. Uh, I hope you participate in the alpha. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, you know, just to remind everyone, we have a long way to go, uh, but we hope what we have now is enough to show you the game. So thank you and see you next time.